In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove light pollution from your astrophotography images. And as you can see, there's a lot of light pollution in this photo. I'm back here in northeastern Ohio and actually just took this shot this morning from my driveway and uh, just not really good at all. So I want to show you how to effectively remove light pollution from your images in case you're having the same problem. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You know, you can try and adjust the white balance and neutralize that color cast. That's one way. But ultimately, the problem you'll have with this is that all of this red light you're seeing was added to the image. You know, if I were to go out to a pristine dark sky location, we wouldn't have any of this. So this is all added light that we have to remove. So to remove it, the best thing that you can do is go into Adobe Photoshop. So I'm going to open this image up in there, and then we'll start our light pollution removal process. And the way we're going to do this is using a curves adjustment layer. Now, the next thing to do where it says RGB, these are our three different color channels. We've got red, green, and blue. And since there's a lot of red in this image that I don't want, I'm going to click on red. Next, I want to click the little hand icon tool here. And now I have the flexibility. If I just click somewhere in the image, it adds a point to our graph here. So I can click on multiple areas and add multiple points. Now, I don't want to do that, so what I really want to do is just make sure the hand icon is selected. Now, if I just click and drag down or drag up, I'm either adding red to the image or subtracting red. Remember, we're trying to subtract that light pollution, in this case, this red color, from our image. So if I click and drag down, I'm removing it from the shadows. The problem is there should still be some red here in the nebula. So to fix that, I can actually just click on the graph manually and add a point, and I can bring up the reds and the midtones and highlights. So now I'm only removing the red from the shadows mainly. And this will take some messing around with to get it just the way you want. And you want to be careful too, you don't have any weird color effects going on in the nebula. That can happen by accident if you're not careful. And one thing you'll probably notice if you go a little bit too far is the image starts to get another color cast. In this case, it's a little bit too green. So I can go down to the green option next, make sure I still have the hand tool selected. Then I can click an area that's too green, click and drag down. And now I'm removing green from the image. You get the idea. So that's how I'm going to remove the color cast. Now, this is quite a bit of work to be honest, and there's a very simple way to do this if you want to do it a lot faster. So if we add a new curves layer, all we have to do is click where it says black point. We have black point, midpoint, or uh, gray point, and then white point. Each one's going to work a little bit different. But the black point, if we click on this top eyedropper, all I have to do is click somewhere in the image that should be black. In this case, pretty much anywhere. So let's say right over here. And there we go. We instantly fix the whole image, really. Now, the only problem I have with this is that the Orion Nebula lost some of the detail there. It's a bit too dark. So what I can do is come up to here where it says normal. And I want to change this down to color. So it's only affecting the color. It's not affecting the brightness. And you can see it did a really nice job of removing that heavy color cast. And then since the contrast looks all out of whack, one of the easy ways to fix this is to add a levels adjustment layer and then just bring up the black point. And there we go. So that's two of the best methods to removing light pollution from your images. Remember, the main goal we have is to remove this red light that's being added by all the street lights. Now, alternatively, you could, let's say, add a color balance layer right here, the little scales. And since mainly our color cast is in the shadows, I would change this to shadows and then I can try and just do this manually, but this is gonna be kind of a pain. And you might also get some weird side effects in your colors, and it might not be uh, necessarily the result you want. Uh, I know a lot of people try and do different adjustments like this, or maybe uh, like channel mixer, you know, that's something else you can try. But for me, the curves are the easiest way to remove light pollution from your night sky images. So I hope this video helped you guys out if you're having a similar problem. Uh, moving forward here, this is going to be just a small portion of my upcoming Deep Space Astrophotography course, which is a free download if you've already purchased the Star Tracker tutorials. For everyone else though, I'll probably make it a standalone download. And really the main goal throughout this whole course is to show you how to actually photograph the Orion Nebula, the Lagoon Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy, all those really fun objects with just a simple telephoto lens. So it will be on location, 
And I'm also gonna show you how to edit the images from start to finish. So we'll look at the photo stacking process, some really advanced editing techniques to really make the Nebula stand out more and a whole lot more. So if you're interested, you can always check out my Star Tracker tutorial series. Uh, and I'm hoping to have this deep space course released by the end of the year. All right, well, that's about all I have for you today in this video. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.